Hello friends, welcome to YouTube channel Electronics. In this video, we will learn about FET, Field Effect Transistor. Electronic devices made our lives convenient and faster. This miraculous speed is because of the processor inside them. These processors have nearly 12 billion transistors. Transistors are mainly two types. Bipolar Junction Transistor and Field Effect Transistor. In earlier video, we had discussed BJT. There are two types of Field Effect Transistors. Junction Field Effect Transistor JFET, and Metal Oxide Semiconductor Field Effect Transistor MOSFET. It is also called Insulated Gate FET. They are further subdivided into Depletion and Enhancement Mode FETs. Note that JFET have only depletion mode of operation. Both of these can be either N-channel or P-channel devices. The transistor family tree is shown in this block diagram. We will focus on JFET in this video. Field effect transistor is a type of transistor that uses an electric field to control the flow of current through it. It has three terminals gate, drain and source. FETs are unipolar devices, which means the current conduction is by one type of charge carriers, that is either by holes in P channel or electrons in N channel FETs. For fabricating an N channel FET, first a narrow bar of N type semiconductor material is taken and then two P-type junctions are diffused on opposite sides of its middle part. These forms two P-N junctions. Direct electrical connections are made at the two ends of the bar. One lead is called drain terminal and the other is source terminal. These two P regions are internally connected and a single lead is brought out, which is called gate terminal. P-channel FET is similar in construction except that uses P-type channel and two N-type junctions are diffused on opposite sides. Direct electrical connections, drain and source terminals made at the two ends of the bar. A gate terminal is brought out by internally connecting these two end regions. If we observe over here, the source and drain terminals are made at the two ends of the same channel. This symmetry suggests that Drain and source terminals are interchangeable. As we know, the majority charge carriers in this N channel are free electrons. And majority charge carriers in these two P regions are holes. We also know that if P and N type materials are joined together, then diffusion will take place. This forms a depletion region at the junction. Similarly, in a JFET, two depletion regions are formed near these two junctions. Now in a N-channel JFET, if we want to flow conventional current from drain to source, let's apply a voltage between drain and source terminals. This voltage is called VDS. Drain should be positive with respect to source. Once we apply this voltage VDS, the electrons will start flowing from the source terminal to drain terminal. Now, if we increase the voltage VDS, the rate of flow of electrons will increase. That means the flow of current increases. Here I am mentioning moment of electrons from negative to positive. But the conventional current holds flows from positive to negative. So in a JFET, the conventional current flows from drain to source terminal. Let's say ID is the current which is flowing into drain terminal and IS is the current which is flowing out of the source terminals. And here the current ID and IS are equal. Now if we apply the voltage between this gate and source terminal, the current flow between drain to source can be controlled. The working of JFET can be explained by using a tap water analogy. Let's say here the flow of water means flow of current from source to drain terminal. And this flow of water can be controlled by turning this knob called gate. Similarly, if we apply a reverse biased voltage VGS between this gate and source terminal of N channel JFET, the current flow between drain and source can be controlled. As we know, in a PN junction, 
the reverse bias will increase the depletion region in the junction. So here in this N channel J FPT, the gate and source PN junction is reverse biased. Hence it increases the depletion region. Because of this increased depletion region, the N channel width will reduce. If we keep on increasing the reverse voltage VGS, the depletion region keeps on increasing. And at one particular reverse voltage, the channel will get closed. If we decrease this reverse voltage VGS, the depletion region will decrease. Now, if we apply a positive voltage VDS between drain and source terminals, the electrons will start flowing from source to drain terminal. But now what happened here is that the channel width is reduced. So the electrons will have to flow through this narrow gap of the channel. Hence the reverse bias between gate and source terminal will reduce the flow of current ID and IS. If we decrease the reverse voltage VGS, the channel width will increase. Hence, there will be more space for the electrons to flow. It means the current flow between drain to source increases. So, by increasing and decreasing the reverse voltage VGS at gate terminal, we can control the flow of current between drain to source terminal. And we can also switch off this channel for current flow. But practically, the depletion region at the junction doesn't look same at the entire junction. It is because if you notice over here, the drain voltage is more positive than source voltage. So the depletion region is wider at the top of this P-type region. It is because the upper region is more positive than lower region. Let's elaborate this. As we know, this end channel is a semiconductor. When we apply a voltage across this channel, it just acts as a resistor. This N channel can be represented as a series of distributed resistors between the drain and source terminals. Here we have applied 4 volts VDS. So the voltage drop at drain is equal to 4 volts. As we move towards the source terminal, there will be a decreasing voltage drop at each resistor with respect to source. We know that there are two P regions in a N channel JFET and the gate terminal is formed by internally connecting them. First of all, we just connect this gate and source terminals together. Here the voltage across the gate and source terminals VGS equal to zero. Now if we observe over here, because of the reducing positive voltage from drain to source in this N channel, the upper region or drain region is more reverse biased than lower region. So the depletion region will form like this. Wider depletion region at top portion and narrower depletion region at bottom portion. Now the electrons will flow through this narrow path and constitutes drain and source current. And here because of the reverse biased PN junction, only a small amount of reverse saturation current will flow through this gate terminal. And in practical cases, this gate current IC can be considered as zero. A small increase in this voltage VDS will increase the flow of current ID and IS through this N channel. If we represent this current ID versus VDS in a graph, ID in X axis, VDS in Y axis, initially it will almost looks like a straight line because for low voltages the channel resistance is constant. So it is a straight line for low voltages of VDS. This curve ID versus VDS is known as the output characteristic curve of the JPAD. Further, if we keep on increasing this voltage VDS, then the width of the depletion region will increase and the channel will become narrower and narrower. And due to this reduced channel width, now the channel resistance will increase and this reduces the current flow. This reduced current flow can be seen in this graph. This region of the graph, the slope of the line changes and it becomes more and more horizontal. And now if we further increase the voltage VDS, 
then at one particular voltage the two depletion regions will touch each other this condition is known as the pinch off condition now there is no path for the charge carriers to flow from one side to other side the voltage at which this occurs is known as pinch off voltage let's denote this pinch off voltage as vp let's note down the voltages here vgs equals to 0 and whenever vds is greater than or equal to vp then this pinch off condition will occur once this pinch off condition occurs then the current id and is will drop to zero because now there is no path for the charge carriers to flow but practically it won't happen and in fact once the pinch off condition reached the current's id and is reaches to saturation level let's understand why saturation occurs at pinch off voltage once once the pinch off condition reaches then the current id and is equals to zero so due to absence of drain current there will be no possibility for different potential levels across this channel and due to that the reverse bias across the pn junction will remove and that would result decrease in depletion region and causes the current to start flowing through the end channel so basically this current ID will not become zero and in fact at the pinch off condition this current ID reaches to maximum or saturation. This saturation current ID is denoted as IDSS. IDSS is the maximum current of the JFET whenever the VGS equals to zero and VDS is more than pinch off voltage. So whenever VDS is more than pinch off voltage, the current which is flowing through the JFET is almost constant. And in this region of operation, the JFET works as a constant current source. This current is known as saturation current represented with IDSS. Saturation region of JFET is also called pinch off region. And this linear region is called ohmic region of JFET. Let's discuss this with one example. Here VGS or gate to source voltage is 0. Now let's apply 2 volts across the drain and source that is VDS and we will increase VDS slowly. Let's assume at the starting current flow was 2 amperes and it also increases as the VDS increases. So here JFET's output Output characteristic curve appears like this. Now, when the VDS is reached to 5 volts, current flow reaches to 5 amperes. JFET's output characteristic curve increases linearly and looks like this. When the VDS reaches to 8 volts, because of the very narrow channel path for the current flow, the current flow will reach it only up to 6 amperes. Now, the JFET's output characteristic curve slopes changes to somewhat horizontal. Further increase in VDS to 10 volts will not increase the current flow. ID is same as before. It 6 amperes. Now the curve becomes horizontal line because of the constant current flow. This constant current is termed as saturation current IDSS and the voltage at which the drain current becomes constant is termed as pinch off voltage. This region is called ohmic region. Now up to 14 volts current flow is constant that is 6 amperes. This constant current flow can be seen as a horizontal line in the graph. This saturation region also termed as pinch off region. After 14 volts any small increase in VDS the FET will get avalanche breakdown and a very high current will start flowing through JFET. This avalanche breakdown can be represented as a vertical line in the output characteristic curve. Generally in data sheets, the maximum value of the VDS has been defined. This region is known as avalanche region. So during the operation, the value of VDS should be less than this maximum value. The pinch off region is also called as active region of the JFET. The pinch off region in JFET is very similar 
equivalent to the linear operating region of the bipolar junction transistor or BJT. Now, so far in our discussion, we have assumed that the voltage VGS is equal to zero. But as discussed earlier, this gate to source voltage can control the drain current. Now, let's make this VGS more and more negative or reverse bias. So, first assume that the VGS is equal to minus one volt. As we keep on increasing this strain to source voltage VDS, then the width of the depletion region will increase and the current flow will reduce. Let's increase this VGS further. Now VGS is minus 3 volts. Here the width of the depletion region further increased and the pinch off or saturation of the drain current will be reached at the lower voltage of the VDS. So if you observe the output characteristic curve of the JFET, in case of VGS is equal to minus 1 volts, it will look like this. We can notice that the saturation value of the drain current has been reduced and avalanche breakdown value appeared at lower voltage level of the VDS. If you reduce the value of VGS from minus 1 volt to minus 2 volts, then further this saturation value of the drain current will reduce. The saturation value keeps on reducing for further reduction of VGS voltages. And whenever this VGS is equal to minus Vp, then the saturation current will essentially becomes zero. So this reason of operation is known as cutoff reason of operation. Or we can say that whenever this VGS is equal to minus Vp, at that time the device is turned off. So in this way, the JFET can be operated in three different regions. First one, ohmic region. In this region, JFET will work as a resistor. Here we can notice that as we are reducing the value of VGS like minus 1, minus 2, minus 3 and etc. The current flow curves are decreasing. It means channel resistance is increasing. So by varying the voltage VGS, JFET can be used as a variable resistor. The second reason of operation is the saturation reason. Whenever the drain to source voltage VDS is more more than this pinch of voltage Vp, at that time the drain current will almost remain constant. And the third reason of operation is the cutoff reason. Whenever VGS is greater than or equal to Vp, at that time drain current ID will be approximately equals to zero. And we can say that the device is turned off. So apart from these three reasons, there is one more reason and it is known as avalanche breakdown reason. This reason of operation of JFET should be avoided. In this reason, the current is limited solely by the external circuit. Generally, data sheet shows maximum value of VDS. We must make sure that our operating VDS must be less than this VDS maximum value. So this is all about output characteristic curve of the JFET. Now so far in our discussion, we have only discussed about the N channel JFET. But the P channel JFET also works in similar way. So in case of P channel JFET, the channel is made up of P type semiconductor and two N type reasons are fabricated in this channel. So in P channel JFET, the polarity of the biasing voltage will also reverse. Drain to source voltage VDS is negative and the gate to source voltage should be positive. Here the charge can carriers in the channel will be holes and electrons will be present in gate. And when we apply the voltage VDS, holes will start moving from source towards the drain terminal and the direction of the conventional current from source to drain. So if we observe the ID versus VDS curve or the output characteristic curve of the P channel JFET, it will looks quite similar to the N channel JFET. But in this case, this voltage at horizontal axis minus VDS that is negative and voltage across gate to source terminal VGS is positive and like N channel JFET, P channel 
JFET also operates in four different regions. First one, ohmic region. Second one, saturation region. Third one, cutoff region. And the fourth one, avalanche breakdown region. So this is all about output characteristics of a P-channel JFET. Now let's see how JFET can be used as an amplifier. This figure shows JFET amplifier circuit. The weak input signal is applied between gate and source. An amplified output is obtained in the drain source circuit. For the proper operation of JFET, the gate must be negative with respect to source. That is, input circuit should always be reverse biased. This is an N-channel JFET. So the major Majority charge carriers are electrons in N channel and holes in gate region. Suppose the reverse voltage at the gate source junction VGS is minus 1 volt. During the positive off cycle of input signal, the reverse bias on the gate decreases. Here VGS minus 1 volt reverse bias decreases to 0.5 volts. Due to this, the width of the depletion region decreased. And this increases the channel width. Hence the current flow in the channel increases. This contributes to increase in the drain current. Just remember that the drain to source channel resistance is directly proportional to the width of the depletion region. So what happened here is due to this reduction in the depletion region, channel resistance is very less. Hence this entire negative voltage of VDS appears at the drain tape. Terminal. This will result a negative going signal becomes available at the output through this capacitor. During the negative off cycle of the input signal, the reverse bias on the gate increases. Here VGS minus 1 volt reverse bias increases to minus 1.5 volts. Due to this, the width of the depletion region increases. Hence the current flow in the channel decreases. This contributes to decrease in the drain current. So what happened here is due to this increase in depletion region, channel resistance is very high. Hence this negative voltage unable to reach the drain terminal. Now the drain is positive with respect to source. This will result a positive going signal becomes available at the output through this resistor and capacitor. It is seen that there is a phase inversion between input signal and the output signal signal. Moreover, a small change in the reverse bias on the gate produces a large change in the drain current. This in fact makes JFET capable of raising the strength of a weak signal. In this way, JFET acts as an amplifier. JFETs have many advantages over ordinary bipolar transistors. JFETs are unipolar devices. That means only one type of charge carriers constitutes current. However, However, in normal bipolar transistor, where both electrons and holes together play part in conduction. JFETs are voltage control devices, where reverse voltage at the gate terminal controls the current flow. However, BJTs are current control devices. BJTs have low input impedance due to forward biased emitter junction, whereas JFETs have high input impedance because of the reverse bias gate junction. JFETs are generally much less noisy than the ordinary bipolar transistors. JFETs have fast switching speed than BJTs. Because of many advantages of JFETs over BJTs, they are used in many applications in electronic circuits. For example, in switching circuits as a multiplexer, as a chopper, as a cascade amplifier and etc. That's all about junction field effect transistor JFET. If you have learned from this video, please do mention them in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please click the like button. Help others to learn by sharing this video. Please subscribe and turn on notifications for more such videos. Have a nice day.